Hey guys, welcome to Waves Multi-Rack Sound Grid for Digico, Installation and Setup Guide. I'm Ishai from Waves Tech Support. In this guide, I'll walk you through the required steps to install and set up your Sound Grid network and control it with your Digico console. Let's start with a list of components necessary to this installation and setup. You will need a Digico console, a Waves Digico I.O. card or DMI card for SD12s, S21s, and S-Series consoles. Multi-Rec SoundGrid plugin host software, including a valid license from Waves. A SoundGrid DSP server to handle plugin processing, and optionally a second server for redundancy. A SoundGrid qualified 1 gigabit network switch. Cat5e or better Ethernet cables to connect SoundGrid network components. Valid licenses for SoundGrid compatible plugins. A Mac or PC computer. Make sure your Digico console is up to date with the latest SD software. Connect the host computer, the Digico console, and servers to the 1 gigabit Ethernet switch. Connect the console's 100 megabit Ethernet port to the switch as well. Power up all the devices. Let's install and activate the Waves software. Multirack SoundGrid software, Waves plugins, and licenses are installed and activated on the host computer, not the console's computer. Open Wave Central and select Install. Choose to install online. Always Products. Search for Multirack Sound Grid. Click it to select. Search for your plugins or bundles and select them. Search for Digico SD Driver V9 or DMI Wave Driver 9 and select it. Now hit Install. Go to Licenses, Manage Licenses, and send the licenses for your Multirack and plugins or bundles to your host computer or to a USB flash drive for safekeeping and portability. When installation is complete, launch Multirack. If you do not own a license for Multirack SoundGrid, please obtain one from Waves.com or your preferred dealer. Let's go to the Digico console to enable Waves Multirack. Go to Options, Console tab, and toggle Enable External Waves Multirack to Yes. Under Choose Waves Network, the SoundGrid network will be pre-selected. We'll need to choose the SoundGrid network that links the console to the host computer. Now you'll need to restart the console. Back to Multirec SoundGrid. Go to Preferences, select the General tab, and pick the relevant LAN port. Now, in order to select the Digico console as a remote control for the Multirec software, click the Remote Control tab, select the same LAN port, click Apply, and Assign. In the status cell, you'll see it's connected. If you have not selected Enable Multirack on the console, you will not see a list of available consoles. Once a connection has been established, the remote LED on the top bar will be black with orange letters. Multirack will display an alert if it encounters sync problems. At this point, we need to set up the SoundGrid system inventory. Let's go to Audio, SoundGrid Inventory, or press F2. Let's assign the various network components we have connected. Our SD console I.O. assign is 1. Multirec software will be pre-assigned to 1. Our main SoundGrid server for processing assign is 1. If you opt to use a second server for redundancy, assign it as 2. Let's go to the SoundGrid Connections page. Audio, SoundGrid Connections, or press F3. Let's set up connections for the audio to stream from the console to Multirec for processing and back to the console. The connection can handle up to 64 channels, in and out. Two Digico SD consoles can be mirrored to provide full redundancy. In the event of failure, control and processing will pass to the redundant Digico and Multirec system. Switching between main and redundant consoles or engines is handled by the console. This requires two complete Digico and Multirec SoundGrid networks, each with the same, most current software versions. Note that if the two systems are in close proximity, you can use one switch for both. That's it, everything is up. Let's discuss session management for a moment. Multirack sessions are saved on the Multirack computer and are loaded when the console sends a request. If a session with the same name already exists in the integrated sessions folder on the Multirack computer, it will load. If a file of the same name is not present in the Multirack computer, an empty session will be created, but it will not be saved. 
you will need to save the session again from the console so that a session with the same name will be saved on the computer as well. Synchronized session files are saved on the multi-rack host and on the console. They must be named identically. An SES file is saved to the console computer in D, Projects. An MRDB file is saved on the multi-rack computer in the Integrated Sessions folder on Mac or PC. If you've already been working with multi-rack on this console in the previous version and have sessions that you'd like to keep, you'll need to copy the multi-rack session files from the console computer to the Integrated Session folders on the multi-rack computer. When you next launch multi-rack, the computers will sync. You'll only need to do this once. If the session includes snapshots, an additional step is required so they can correspond with the console. In order to convert the snapshot titles in multi-rack to the Digico format, back up your original multi-rack session and save a new copy with the exact same name as your Digico session SES file. Turn the remote control off in multi-rack and make sure you have the same number of snapshots in multi-rack and in the Digico session. Rename your multi-rack snapshots numbers and names exactly the same as the Digico snapshots. Thanks for watching this installation and setup guide. If you have any questions or need any help with this process, please contact us here.